All right. Welcome to the Musicians Talk Show podcast. This is episode number 97. 97. Holy shit. I'm one of your hosts, Dallas Dwight. And I'm Matt Tolly. And we treated you to the full theme song, which we haven't done for quite some time. So yeah. there you go. I don't hope you enjoyed it. it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I like it. It brought me back. You guys will never know this, but we are testing some um, video stuff today. Video casting. And we happening. are very, very close. I feel like it's pretty much done. I think so, too. I, I like this a lot. It's a few minor tweaks we need. to be able to pull off, and uh, I think it's going to work out, man. We're going to be able to add a lot more to this podcast now. Oh, yeah. So I'm excited. I think I'll probably stay on the wide angle for most of it. Yeah, I mean, if somebody's telling a story, we go to the close-up. Yeah. But yeah. I think for the most part, we'll just keep the conversation wide. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and I'm um, in range and top. I think you guys will dig it. We did a little something more than just, you know, cameras on a screen. Like we added some graphics and, and kind of made it look hopefully. Dallas, cool. yeah, Dallas did an awesome job. It looks beautiful. I can't wait for you guys so, to check um, it out. I'm New branding. It all goes together. Yeah, know? I like it. New look, the fire look for yeah, 2020 like and beyond. Uh, Matt. Yo. Weekend review. Yeah. Well, you had a big weekend. Yeah. Primarium had their show. We all uh, had a blast. All the bands involved. It was very fun. Um, made a lot of new friends. Uh, a lot of really cool uh, connections made. And um, I don't know, man. It excites me, man. What How do you great, mean? What a great way to start. Oh, just all the bands were super open and everybody sounded good. Everybody came and brought it. Um, it was uh all of the other bands first time playing the milestones so that was interesting you know and the, you know in several ways obviously there was the energy of that like they were all very excited because you know i explained to them a little bit of the history and i'm sure they heard other things actually i know they they looked up other things about the, the place and got some history down mm -hmm. and, and it was cool talking to them about that stuff and uh you know you've been to the milestone you know how it is it's like all the the names of the bands that have played there and stickers everywhere so it's cool it's a lot it's a lot of going on in there and the uh, nice. shows were great, man. Everybody came and, and the turnout was good. Um, we made a good little chunk of change. Everybody went home with over a hundred bucks. So that's good. Nice. I played shows there where I made, uh, like, I think the guy gave me 10 bucks at the end of the night. And I that's was like, so man, funny. you almost should have just not even paid. Like, just yeah. like, hey, man, it wasn't enough. And, and they split it up to be, you know, I guess. You mean every band went, went home with? Yeah. And, and we took that gig. Um, it wasn't one of my gigs that's for sure i i try to aim higher than that for us but this was just like basically a bunch of bands to get together um one of the bands was our friends so that we felt good about doing that but as far as like um the whole thing as a whole the gig how they put it on that at this particular at that particular show mm -hmm. that was like one of those not one of those gigs that i would be proud to you know and then nobody nobody came you know other than our friends you know you mean to the to, to the, the milestone gig about, that yeah. we played yeah not not this last week and this last one was great everybody brought their fair share of people and it was uh it was a really good time because of that you know that was this weekend you're talking about yeah you're yeah, talking about friday night ones. okay it was friday you. night and uh, so that one was a good success yeah that was a great success i we had a great time we unveiled a bunch of new merch a bunch of uh just you know all kinds of new things we, we brought friends out that took pictures for us and did some cool things we had all kinds of fun nice yeah, man. Felt good. I felt, it's a good way to start out 2020 as far as uh, fun gigs, you know? I hope we have a lot of those this year. Yeah. How about you? What would you do this weekend, bud? Uh, well, I wanted to say, what was the name of that um, uh, that really stupid album that came out Friday or Saturday? Saturday. Oh, the really stupid one? Yeah. Oh, uh, Prep and Barium? Shit, that was yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's it. the one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did drop an it's album. already too. in my library. About that. Yes. It's, uh, yeah, it's on Spotify, Apple Music, all the places, YouTube. I've been I, so pumped. I kind of checked it out at a, few, at a few places. Dude, it sounds amazing, Dallas. And I, it's I, awesome. When I listen to it, I think of all the, you know, the stuff that we did to it together, and we, like, we really worked on it, and all those little parts that really made mm -hmm. it awesome. The harmony guitars, you, you know, mm -hmm. you suggested a lot of really cool ideas. Uh, and I just love the way it turned out, man. I'm super proud of it. And I'm super excited for the to do another one. So I don't know exactly how yeah. long that's going to take, but I'm very excited to like already since that took so long, we have so much material ready to go. You know what I mean? You know what it's like. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we'll have to do the next one. I've gotten yes. way better at recording drums now. Yes, yes. <laughs> with all this and, practice. <laughs> and I was thinking about that. We should uh, we should figure out how we're going to do that next time because uh, you know what? Actually, first on the agenda, and I guess this if you guys are watching this, you're going to get a little sneak peek at, of something that I'm not telling anybody yet. But we're going to put an EP out next year. And I'm not going to go into any You mean this than, year? Yeah, this year. Sorry. Oh, cool. it, it is 2020, right? This year, we're going to put out an EP probably late, uh, like fall? later in the year, like fall, right? And I want to do um, a song that me and you worked on, co wrote together. Oh, uh, Black Magic. Yeah. yeah. So I want to put that on it and do like kind of I still a, think you should Halloween record it, EP. though. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, we yeah. are. Okay, we are. Cool. That's what I'm saying. So that's, that'll be the next project there was before the next album. I have to say, though, there was something about 
So when you hear the demo track that I that we did, it's not really a demo. It's yes. more completed than that. But yes. it sounds super, super thick and people fat. Love it. People love that track. And, and the only reason I want to make it, like, do it, redo it is because I want to involve mm-hmm. the band members and yeah. let them put their touch on it. I went back and looked at the recording of it because I was like, why does this sound so much fatter? It's just two guitar tracks. That's it. Nice. There's nothing else on it. That Kemper it's tracks. literally just saying. two. And, and all it was is it's the Gold Top Les Paul on a, a big heavy gain tone and it's just they're real tight and it's just for yeah. some reason it's the riff tuned. is just is that, so that thick. Drop tune yeah it's in c sharp yeah, yeah c sharp so that's that's cool that's, I'm and it's just got a lot of spidery that. kind of weird riffs that i was playing around Dude, with and really i wrote it as an forward. homage to alice in chains but yes. it came out really nice and it sounds like that still people say like oh it's got like this alice in chains vibe yeah. but it's mm-hmm. different it's, and obviously it's different because i told dallas when he so dallas wrote all the music he had it all basically uh, demoed. we've probably talked about this in the show up maybe a hundred times or something but well wrote, you know what <laughs> we could we have this ability now we can straight up play it for him nice that is true you want to do that yes let's go ahead and do it the demo and this will you be talk it. about it while i pull it up though because it's going to take me a second yeah, yeah. So, so this is how it came about. Dallas had this music ready to go, kind of thinking like he wanted to write an Alice in Chains type song. And he even reached out to uh, singers that were in Alice in Chains tributes and whatnot and just known for doing a good Alice in Chains, like Lane Staley cover. And mm-hmm. um, just, you know, when you go to write a song or you ask somebody to write a song, it, it could take a while. You never know what you're going to get. Like some people can write a song in, overnight and some people can't. Yeah. Take some, you know, a long time. Yeah, I asked three different singers. Yeah, and, and you got something more than back. That, I think. Did you get something back, or did you get? Um, I sent it to that dude that l- sounds like a spitting image yes. of Lane Staley. Yes, I remember that in, in Chicago, and he really enjoyed it, but he didn't do anything with it. Right, it's um, hard. It's hard to write music. I, put I sent it on the to. Do you know too. Dylan Reynolds? I do not. He's a singer in in this area. I sent it to him, and he sent back something that I loved. Oh, cool! And then he just never sent anything else. He sent me a video of him working on it. Oh, it, so like, like he was he was a little videoing himself recording the like first verse or whatever. And I'll have to show you that because it's have to show me slayed, that dude. Yeah. And I was so pumped. And then uh, really and then never heard from him again. And then Colton was working on it for a little bit. And then you kind of you were working on it. Everyone was kind of working on it at the same time. Right. And you were the one that just kind of followed through the best. <laughs> yeah, I think I well I'll, the interesting thing about so how good. it happened is I was uh, I was thinking about like what am I going to write about what am I going to do and um, I thought I was like man it has this really spooky vibe and uh, mm-hmm. it sounds like black magic so I came up with a title before anything I might even have that chorus the way that kind of I thought it should go but uh, I didn't really have a, a lot of no- knowledge about black magic well I woke up on a Sunday morning and was watching uh, it was just on TV I think uh, somebody had it on TV and it was watch uh, with strange inheritance and somebody had inherited uh, a giant collection of occult black magic books hmm. which is so funny to me so then anyways they went into the whole history of black magic and and the the story behind why a, with a k the coincidence and all that stuff. i don't know the so, k thing so you'll have to key yeah, in so, on that what's so, up with that so basically what it is this is like uh symbolizes the occult uh basically the uh, relation which is like the dark magic st- side of things you know i, I don't know so with magic versus black magic with a K is a different, like right. it's a different meaning. Is it darker? I thought, I thought the K was just like the English spelling. Or it something. has something to do like, with, it has something to do with like being evil basically. So that okay. was my whole intention. Cause I thought the riff sounded so evil. I was like, man, this thing has like such a sleazy evil vibe. And I, I really wanted to do something, you know, in that vein. So anyways, and then so, after it was done, yeah, uh, I felt like this was, I'm be loving the flexibility up. we have with this video thing now. Cause now I'm, I have so much more power in the past and yes. you could tell by the way we just said it, we were like, ah, oh, whatever you'll hear it sometime. Right. Right. Now it's like, wait a second. Yeah. I can just pull it up and Play show you right now, now. which in the past we too. couldn't do that. But one thing we did very, or I did very differently when, once you sent me your, um, vocal tracks. Yeah. Your vocal tracks. Yeah. I, I changed the intro all around. Yes. I thought the intro kind of dragged a little bit. Here's the original one. And I haven't opened these mixes since, it says yeah this is an old november project. 10th 2017 Damn, so that's so crazy oh no that was uh that's that the, was the, the that was the final mix. mix the original one i'm about to open now hadn't been open since 15. october 2015 Damn. when i wrote it that's crazy. so i can't speak to how this mix sounds but um <laughs> here is <laughs> um this is four five years ago almost dude cool Let's this is uh i'll just play the intro of it and then, yeah, then we'll yeah. compare to the other one real quick yeah And it goes into the chug, yeah. chug, chug for the verse. I was, it just drops. I always thought that riff part. was kind of cool, but it was, it never hit me as hard as some other riffs did in the song, particularly the chorus. The chorus hits hard as shit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I, 
after Matt sent his lyrics back, I kind of got a vibe for what he was doing. Yeah. I cut the intro basically completely out and made this really creepy, like, girl screaming and monster laugh with, like, all these different yeah. uh, effects and stuff. So which, Yeah, which immediately gave it, like, this, this spooky yeah. vibe. Yeah, and then Even we just launched straight into the I verse. So now I'm going to play the, the final mix, and I think we're going to let the whole song play. Yeah, go so ahead. It's, play. it's you know, four to minutes and 20 seconds, so we're going to... We're going to be uh, silent for that time, but um, enjoy this black magic mix one. So <laughs> perfect. I like it. <laughs> Can't say it was finished, but here you go. <laughs> That's the first mix, man. It's really like Dal- I sent Dallas the vocals. I recorded in my bedroom, and uh, he mixed it up. And we talked a little bit about it, but we really haven't gotten back to it as far as fixing it or doing anything that we want to add to it because there are definitely ideas we have. You know, mm-hmm. the ideas can keep coming yeah. because when we go to re-record this thing for real with real drums and do the real, you know, I want to get prepared. Here's something called strings. 
What strings, strings are in here? Oh, at the very beginning, probably a Listen swell. To the wind. I wonder if other people can hear that. Yeah. Aww. If you guys can hear the wind howling through the doors of my apartment. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't it's, know what it, it's just the way the door, I guess it doesn't quite seal maybe. So the wind kind of cuts through it when it's well, windy. It's, coming, it's also it's been raining through lately. the hallway, the breezeway there. And I think that's a lot of it. You know what I mean? You know the part that I always remember from that? Anywhere I might go. Yeah. That yeah, always yeah. Sticks, in, sticks in my head every time I... Yeah. Or it, help me whatever conjure. That's what the lyric is. Help me conjure love anywhere I might go. I'll be your voodoo child. <laughs> that throw you go to the flat Hendrix. one. Oh, so cool. Yeah, it worked Anyways. out, man. I, I really like the way I, that tune was. I just knew it was going to be a good song. Like I think it was so well, well laid out. Sorry, I couldn't talk right now. Yeah, it was fun. I remember writing that in my old apartment when I had a loft, which was really fun. Yeah, I feel like you played it for me when we recorded It's So Easy. I think that's the first time I ever heard it. And then uh, later possibly, on, I asked yeah. you about it. I was, probably, I was probably seeing if you wanted to sing on it, because I, I was always looking I for singers. I think so. That was probably about the same time. Holden was with me when I wrote it, and he was the one that laid down the first thing. But I don't, I don't right. even remember what he... It's probably still in that session, in like a playlist somewhere. Right. I am actually guarantee it is. That's actually um, pretty cool. Like, I'd like to, but I don't remember what he said. I do still want to do that show with Colton and Osara, man. That'd be really cool. We got to get that going this year. Um, we'll figure We're out a cool venue. We're April, too, right? Yeah, yeah. If we can get them involved. If, if not, then, man, I don't think we need them. We'll get another band, you know? It's the venue that, that we need. Yes. I mean, we can play anywhere, though. I'm not, I'm not totally holding out just for the best venue we can get. I'm, if we want to just play a show sometime soon, and then we'll still do that big venue, you know, ideas at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's throw a, a small gig together, have, have fun, go hang out. You know, it's fun. Yeah. I like, uh, I like playing music with my friend, man. That's what I realized after this weekend, too, is just having bands that you, you like the people in helps a lot. Like, oh, yeah, um, for sure. Our, our boys in Element, shout out to those guys. Uh, they opened up for us and, and came through basically at, in the last minute. And uh, is their first time ever playing the Milestone. Uh, they really killed as far as promotion-wise. They uh, promoted our music. They promoted our, our album coming out and stuff like that really well. So really happy with what those guys did. And that, that makes me feel good, you know. And, and we, in return, shared uh, their page to every, all our friends and stuff like that and made sure, you know, they got some love, too. So it was a yeah. good mutual promotion thing, you know. Yeah, that's fun. awesome. Uh, my Weekend Review didn't do us quite as much. We had um, a show Saturday night, which was cool. Hickory Tavern, Steelcroft. Oh, Hickory Taverns are probably always good the for you guys, um, man. You guys kill probably the there. best one we've played there at that location. Nice. We had really good locations. We were getting like, like roaring applause nice. after some songs. I feel like, like you guys always do, man. I, 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 I mean, love the usually you, you get, get you know the couple people up front that are paying attention or clapping, and everyone right. in the back's just right. trying to eat. But we had a uh, good. Night. We for whatever we did, we had we captured we captured them that night, and cool. they were uh, they were into it. Oh, that's Every, so everyone stopped and stayed and. Uh, just cheered a lot. It was really awesome. That's cool. Yeah, I love that. Got a lot of compliments, like uh, between sets and at the end of the night. A lot of people coming up, you know, saying this, that, and the other. I love that. A lot man. of people came up to me personally, which I was really flattered by, and said um, that it's the best they'd seen me play. And it was a bunch of people that had, that go to like every show. You. Cool. So I was like, oh, that's nice. I was like, I, I felt like I kind of just did the same thing I always do, but <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I, 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 did, is, I don't think I did anything extra special. I was just kind of doing. That's such know. a disconnect that I feel like will always be there, as far as like from musicians to people like in the crowd listening to it. I think I don't know what it is. Is it, it's in our head, but it, I always feel like whenever. I have like a particularly off night and I'm like, man, I really messed up. I really, you know, I, sh I didn't hit the stuff that I always hit. Like it's, I kind of so find that stuff more funny then, than anything. But it's always, yeah, but it's always when I do that, have that night, like when I mess some stuff up, that's when people come up to me and tell me what a great job I did. And I wonder like, are you guys just trying to boost my Maybe ego? Maybe they know you need it. Are, yeah. Are you just trying to, <laughs> yeah, I've never been the better. guy to walk off stage and be like, God, I blew it. I, I've never, no, been I've never that I don't guy feel like, like that usually, but I do mess up sometimes. And I think, man, I can't believe I messed that stupid part up that I always get. Like that's not, cause I know if I miss, you know, a couple notes here and there it's uh, not the end of the world because yeah. i probably got most of them so it's like you know it's all good exactly it's never never bothered me yeah i mean not that it bothers me bothers me but i just think it's ironic that whenever i do have one of those nights that that's when people come yeah that's when everybody me. comes up yeah for sure when i've had on nights yeah I, I wouldn't say up. i definitely wouldn't say last night was an off night for me no. um i just felt like it was kind of standard i didn't feel like it was anything like above and beyond yeah you know yeah like, exactly exactly yeah well I didn't, I didn't i didn't feel like holy shit i fucking went extra now like, you know what that is probably is that's you getting used to I actually your, felt your like own, i missed something you're getting things, used you know? yeah exactly you're getting used to your uh your playing and you just you know it feels normal to you it's like that's what i do now you know and we hadn't played in it we played uh january 4th and then we the last game we played was december 6th and we have not 
touched those songs since then. Wow. So we are just we're so dialed into those songs in. that we just that we just Oh uh, yeah. Sometimes and everybody a break, said it was man. like the best show they've ever seen us. Somebody sometimes a little break, man, you feel more energy coming back into it. You're like, man, this is awesome. Back to, back at it again, you know? Yeah. You get that uh, My favorite part of the night's doing that the three prince songs. Yeah. I you know, really want to get it. that cloud guitar working because yeah, let's get, I, that'll be like a game yeah. changer. We got I think. so many things to do, man. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna build a teleprompter, we're building ego boxes. We gotta That's do happening this. This we gotta week. finish the sticker teleprompter guitar. Teleprompter this week. Sticker guitar. That's some work to do. We'll get it done. I want to start bringing that sticker guitar to the cover gigs. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. I think I might make that my standard guitar if it ends up playing. All right. Yeah. It should play fine. I mean, cause it's going to, it's going to be so eye catching that I would like to use that over my, I might retire my Zane and just let it kind of sit. Sure. For studio Studio guitar guitar, as needed or whatever. Totally. Totally. Taking the same there, but it's not, it's not my style of guitar. I love the way it sounds and I'm, and I like, and it just, it's for the visual. The, uh, are you talking about the Zane or are you talking about the cloud? Uh, um, the Zane. Oh, okay. You're, the Zane's not your style. I always thought you loved that guitar. No, it's fine. I like it. It's um. That's but, you know, it's just not my that thing. A... No, it was oh. supposed to be, and they messed it up. Oh no! <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yeah, they make you fill out this form of like every detail you want, uh-huh. and I put twenty four frets, and they sent me one with twenty two. Oh, I got no. it, and I was like, and ended up liking it more in the long run. I don't okay. like twenty four fret guitars too much. Yeah, but um. You know, if I need to hit that high E, I'll just bend to it. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And a lot of, like, great players, Slash and uh, Dime, have played with 22 frets and have really made it work, you know? And they, yeah, I don't, plays. I mean, how much work are you really doing on those last two frets? Not you know? much, not much. But I, I do, uh, I've written songs that have that last note in it. Well, just mm-hmm. by happenstance, that's where it went to. You know, but back if you're just e. hitting that note, you can just bend to it. Yeah, you can easily if bend to it. If you're bending that one, now now you're out of range. But yes, that's yes. an F sharp and that's much less common. Yeah, exactly. If you're in standard tuning, at least. Yeah, so I have a, I have a the interesting thing about that twenty four twenty two fret LTD is the cheaper brand of an ESP, the guitar company. LTD makes a twenty four fret Les Paul, uh, right? That's really just thin that and, feels and more sharper. Me, you know? And then the ESP it's company, the, Eclipse, the, right? the more expensive, yeah, the Eclipse and the ESP company it makes an Eclipse as well, and they make the body fat and with twenty two frets, so it's almost like a Les Paul standard, but with the sharper but with horn. The sharper horn. Yeah. But why would they? I don't understand why the twenty two frets has to be. Uh, you know why? Do, why can't they have twenty two frets on a more expensive model? You mean twenty four? That's twenty four frets. Yeah. So uh, maybe it has something to do with the tone or something. I don't know. Or maybe, uh, man, I don't know. Maybe you sacrifice something when you dig dig into it more. I don't know. Maybe they wanted to just di- uh, differentiate uh, from the fat guitar being like the classic like fat tone guitar, and then the thin guitar being the you know shredder with twenty four frets yeah. kind of thing. It's kind of a different mm-hmm. animal. But I really do love that guitar, that LTD that I have. It's a. It's weird. I don't think I'd ever call a Les Paul or Les Paul look like a shredder's guitar. You know, never. You can shred on it, but I'm not thinking of a shredder's guitar when I envision. I think a super strat. You know. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Something with double cut. Yeah, that's a super strat in my mind. But that's pretty much just RG essentially. This is a Jackson, but yeah. Um, But in my mind, I have heard. I don't. I never confirm this, but Steve Vai owns the patent for the RG shape, not just the monkey monkey grip. Yes, but the RG shape itself. Yes, that's him. And it's (laughs) it's just some specific two pointed double cutaway guitar. Essentially, it's like it's not. uh, It's not rocket science. It's basically all of it's based off of a Stratocaster, but they've been modified to make them sleeker and more reach. Basically, they've cut the the uh, what you call the cutaways deeper, so you can get down in there better. And they've made them thicker in certain spots you know they do all kinds of things they've made them neck through yeah, all that I, stuff yeah, they take gone away from the bolt-on so yeah that's a bolt-on though but that's mm-hmm. a different style yep. bolt-on where it's like low profile bolt-on whereas if you've ever played a fender strat which i know you have they have that big break big, yes yeah, exactly I, I don't i've never liked that never liked um that. i love strats for their tones but i it's a studio only thing probably for me yes yeah i agree um, There's too about, many weird things with them, and I'll go through them right now. First of all, you can't not hit the volume knob when you're picking. Right. Yeah. And I'll accidentally turn it down constantly. Right. Uh, when you rest your hand on the bridge, all those little bridge pins stab into your hand. Yeah. And it's fucking annoying. Yeah. Um, the big brick on the back is super annoying. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's not the perfect shape. It's not the perfect design. I, I hate the scale length. It but feels it like I have to bend design. like two full steps to get, get one full step bend. It's like, it's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. It's Every string I've ever broken has been on a strat. It's 25 and a half. So there's more tension. Um, I like it though. I, I, I my, uh, ESP is a 25 and a half. Did I say 24 and a half. I, I meant 25 and a half, 24 and three quarters is less Paul, which is yeah. like slinkier skin, uh, string. Sorry. It gives you like more, uh, more to bend basically. Yeah. It doesn't put the strings under so much tension. 
um which yeah people break strings more with with 25 and a half scales like, i feel like like because i'm so oh, used to less pause we're nerding out on guitars right every now. time i try to bend it's like not enough on the strat and i have to keep going keep going keep going then it gets there and it breaks yeah well it's like, there you go it. It's not, and, and you know what helps? Floating bridges help with that. Oh, that's really? another thing that's a benefit to it because it'll move. The bridge will actually give hmm. a little. But then it also, it knocks your other strings out of tune. So if you're trying to do double stop bends, everything goes out of tune. Oh, so that's that what sense. a flo- floating bridge cannot do is double stop bends. That's Because it knocks everything out of tune. It's interesting. There's a lot of interesting things about that. They have locking bridges for that. They have like a, you take a floating bridge and it, it's a tremble no is what it's called. Yeah, yeah that's and what you, uh, Guthrie Govan is the first exactly, person I heard that had that. Tighten that shit up and then it locks your bridge and then you loosen it and you have a floating bridge again. Mm-hmm. So yep. it's, it's a way to... Be yeah, he to had, it. he was, when we were at a clinic with him, he had his, uh, I think it was Charvel at the time. And um, I'll show you a picture of it here if I can pull oh, it up. cool, cool. Charvel. And he, he was with, playing for Charvel. Uh, or maybe that's who he's with now. Okay. That's cool. I uh, it was Sir. Played. It was Sir when I was with him. Let me see. Right, right, right. This is his now, that blonde one. Okay, yeah, nice. Um, Can we show people? Yeah, I will as soon as I get it up. They don't need to see me typing. Like, <laughs> if you did see Dallas typing, so that his, would be his signature now is with uh, Charvel, but it used to be with Sir. Okay. When I. Knew I him did not know that. And this is what it Sirs have always like. seemed really nice to me. Oh, they're super expensive, too. Oh, stirs are super nice. Oh my yeah. God. So here you go. So this is the, um, and this is his with the trimble note. So this is, yeah. So he has, he basically described, he walked us through everything on his guitar and why he had it set up the way he had it. And he said he wanted it to basically be a blank slate that he could do absolutely anything with. Right. And see, that's the thing. The tremolo. Uh, so he could have the floating, floating. He could have the no. He could have disadvantage the, as far as like. All the pickups are super versatile. Nice. He's, this one's obviously beat up, which actually looks kind of cool. It's a, Yeah, it looks like it's actually. Um, These little pins right here. This, relic. this, this, this. Th- those are what's stabbing your hands. Okay. Well, those are, strat. those, what they are is they raise your string height. Yeah. So. Oh, those are so nice. I want one. Yeah, that was really sweet. American Theory. I like the color of his, too, just the tobacco sunburst. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. cool that there's one out there. They're not, they're not easy to find. That's really cool. As you guys can I like see. how they have the, uh, the full Here's print out Charvel. of the stats, too. Um, yeah, that's the one you were just telling. I want to see if I can find the actual one. Oh, like oh that's the Angel Vivaldi there. I love that guitar. Yep, yep. So this is his new one. So after he left Sure, he went with Charvel. And that is... Uh, this one, I guess. Musician's yeah. friend, sure. I haven't been to this website in forever. Musician's friend's good, man. They... The Bag of Doom is from here, and it's one of their brands. <laughs> nice. I, I bought it, and dude, I've had that thing for over 10 years. Yeah, that's a cool ass bag. You can see it's kind of the same thing. Right, right. Um, well, it's his style. He's... But look, at see how they got that cutaway right down it's... there on, the, on the, their note plate, first of all, that you don't yeah, need the a back plate. Right here? Yes, and then they and he cut away a little bit of the corner, so it's rounded a little bit. Less blocky. It's right here, yeah. 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 I like that. that. Block, and nice corner right And the cutaway in the bottom, actually, is not this uh, no, the bottom right one. here. The other one, that's the belly cutter. Right cutter. That one right there, yeah. that's actually like not Fender at all either. That's very cleared out. So it's kind of, it's very Fender like, you know, that's a very Stratocaster like body. Like strat. yeah, Got rid sure. of the, the plate. It's, it's built into it, routed in, you know, that's a badass guitar. Yeah, that's not, it doesn't look like that to my knowledge. The color is much lighter More than blonde. that. It looks like this. There's, there's that one, right? Which is that maybe that's just a bad picture. I've noticed that about guitar Could be pictures. lighting. Yeah, lighting. The lighting sometimes I got a I got a um the Music Man Luke, it looked very very red in the pictures and when I got it it was so garnet it looked black almost. I don't know what the Music Man Luke is. Uh, Steve Luke, their signature. Oh, okay, okay. You you saw it? Yeah, I know you're saying now. This is what it looks like. Yeah, the I had the. Um, I know you're saying now. Yeah, Music Man Luke one. I had the red one. Let's see if I can find this image. Yeah, there you go. This image right here. Look how red this thing looks. Yeah, it's not that red at all, no, dude. No. It's I think like, I saw that guitar, didn't I? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I had it. I sold it recently, but right. it looked super red. So I was like, "Hell yeah, I need a red. I needed a red guitar for a very specific thing." Right, right. So I, I decided it ended to go up being with like this more one. maroon, right? And it ended up being like like almost black. Can you find a picture? Oh, there, it is. there's a picture on the left, right there. That one is what it looks like. Kind of, and that's with a light on it. Yeah, that's still got. It's like when the light's not on it. It's, it's very it's dark. Like, it's like this color. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah, that's the thing about paint and wood, though, man. Too like I realized it, you, we're you talking, really uh, <laughs> we're talking like they can see it because we are doing video, uh-huh. but we're not going to be releasing the video, oh, so yeah, nobody so. can see what we're talking Damn. about. Well, oh well. So maybe we should release the video. I don't know. We can do it just as a preemptive. I don't know. Maybe yeah, page. We'll, we'll save it. We'll save it. <laughs> all right. Anyways, so sorry about describing all these things you can't see, but in uh, just a couple weeks you'll be able to see everything. We're yes. still working out some kinks, is why and. Um, 
For example, yeah. when we were playing the Black Magic song, we had muted our mics. Yes. And we were talking to each other about stuff. Hopefully they really are muted. You guys couldn't hear it. Um, but if you were watching the video, if we had, were releasing the video, we would not have done that because you would have been watching us talk right. <laughs> and not hear us. Right. So uh, just little stuff like that. We're trying to work out some kinks. Exactly. We're trying to make sure we don't, we, don't, we don't have the background set yet. You know, that one kind episode of stuff, 100 so. to go flawlessly. We don't want any problems unforeseen. So that's what we're kind of doing today. We still need like a table, you know, just little odds and ends. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't but look by bad. and large, the, the most uh, difficult part of the setup has been completed. Yeah. We have all the graphics done, the cameras, Man, the audio that worked I can't out. Wait. So I can't wait. I'm really excited that we have desktop audio now, which means yes. we can just play anything on the computer and you guys will be able to hear it. Yep. That's a game changer. Yep. We can pull up... Um, what ended up being the problem there? We can pull up Guthrie Govan discussing was it, the Charvel was it guitar. <laughs> was it just one setting you were missing or was it like... It's pretty complicated had, was on this. It? Yeah. Damn. You want to listen to some of this? Sure. Guthrie Govan discusses his signature Charvel guitar. Right. Let's hear what he says about it. Cool. Also, listen and plays. He's probably the number one guitar player in the world. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd put him right there with Bumblefoot. Unbelievably good. Oh, well, this is just one of his songs. He's very English if you're not prepared. How long did it take to design my signature model? Longer than anyone expected. Um, because we kind of went back to first principles with this guitar. There were certain things that Charvel were already doing where I just said, yes, I want that. Um, this neck joint, for instance. We were just talking about that. It's it funny. Cool. I can get right up there. Oh, you know what? I get right you should, up there. You should be able to watch this too, huh? Block is in oh, yeah. And I just Might spent well. an unhealthy amount of time up at the top end. Um, or the, the neck profiles, they've been good at that for decades. I didn't have to request anything or modify anything. Other stuff was more difficult. Um, like the pickups were custom made. He's got an EVH 5153 behind him. Frank nice, good amp. And uh, I was just giving him these abstract phrases like, can you make the pickups more, finger sorry, work, pick ups more honest? Yeah, that's uh, either fives or sevens. That's I don't know what, what I meant. One of his original um, songs. And he later said that making these pickups was a lot easier than making Eric Johnson's pickups, which I could believe. Um, that was my request, because what I should be doing is hooking that around there. So, number one, if I step on the cable, the strap will stop it yeah, from coming out. Yeah, that's what I was told everybody. You'd be surprised how many people don't do that. Oh, yeah. The it's the difference between amateur and pro. Well, exactly. I mean, you step on your cable and it comes out at a gig. Funny so. story about that. I was at... um. I went to a guitar thing at Berkeley music as a kid and, um, our, uh, that's fine. I don't know if you want to, they're not going to see this anyway. I was wondering if we to practice switching back, but they're, uh, we all, we had like kind of a counselor, like a guide through, you know, the thing or whatever. And, um, our guy was Dave Martone, mm -hmm. who at the time I didn't know. And since have come to realize is like super legit, like has a successful solo career. Like one of his best friends is Joe Satriani. Right. Anyway. Right. Um, we, we all plugged up and it was, you know, five or six of us. And he goes, all right, none of you guys are going pro except this guy. And he, po and he pointed to me and he's <laughs> like, do you know what that means? And I was like, no. And he was like, you put your cable in through your strap and every, nobody else did. Yeah. And he called them all out. I was nice. like, oh, nice. That's cool. He actually made it's it like, a point. That's amazing. No, that's I, cool. Also, I lost my wallet three times and Dave Martone <laughs> found it all three times. No way. And he, at the, the very last time, he was like, dude, you, you got to you gotta fucking figure that out. Was dude. he just like, taking your wallet, though? He was like, you need <laughs> to get a fucking chain or something, man. Like, yeah, I'll play you some of his music, dude. The guy is insane cool all right we're back to go through here bit of weirdness we're not gonna watch uh, all this got but inlays, laugh if you will he's got a nice uh, little fuzz uh whatever you call those things mufflers that goes yeah that's on one of the groove gear bands i, think. I like those I told it's a very impressive light baby show uh, hair tie was perfect trying to play songs all he's touring with that neck oh my god that right. thing's gorgeous stainless steel frets total darkness Almost total dark. I love the way the inlays are. They're, they're pearl with black rings around them, so they stand out a little bit. So I wanted dots that didn't kind of glow in the dark. I just wanted normal dots, but ones that were visible in every conceivable lighting situation. So we came up with this light in the middle and then black. Oh, it lights up. He's talking about oh, light. Uh, I think he's talking color. about touring with Hans Zimmer. It's hard to hear on our end, sorry, because it's kind of quiet. No, he's talking about the inlays. He wanted them light. Yeah, but he's talking about why he wanted them that way. Oh. Because every time he's playing with Hans Zimmer, I think he was saying it's super dark. Oh, so he needs he some more bold scenarios. Okay, I see. Oh, he's got words of wisdom on here. Dinky Pinky. Dude, this song is unbelievable. Let's play it. An error. YouTube. 
All right, do you know who his drummer is? No. He's a drummer for Nickelback. Really? Daniel Adair. Yep. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Is he Canadian by chance? Uh, I'm not sure. Dave Martone? Uh, Dave Martone? I don't know if Dave's... Because I know they're from Canada, right? I think they are. Yeah. But uh, I would check out his stuff. That song's really shreddy, but he's got some real tasteful jams as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, everybody yeah, hates on Nickelback. Vancouver. Everybody hates on Nickelback, and that's, you know, but, like, I think it's just because it's successful. Hey, you know look I mean? who he's performed with. Holy shit, man. Bot- and Michelangelo right Batio. Man, that's crazy. Batio. Batio. Batio? It's like radio, Batio. but with a B. Oh. I always thought it was Batio. Michelangelo. Billy Sheehan, dude. Yeah, it's just the who's who of shredders. Yeah, basically every all the fucking Daniel Dare, guys. Joe Satch, Mike Portnoy, Ingve, Greg Howe, Paul Gilbert, Marty Friedman, Jennifer Batten. Marty Friedman, that's cool. Yeah, dude. Anyway, so you know, come, come. I didn't even find it out. My roommate at the thing found out. He came home and he was like, "Yo, is your dude Dave Martone?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Why?" He's like, "Dude, I looked him up. He's super legit." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I didn't know." Like, because he was, you know, he was an instructor at the time, so he didn't play hardly at all. He right. was just talking to us, right? And um. I think he did one thing. He was like, you guys know the major scale, right? And he went like, like we were like, holy shit. All right. Yeah. This guy can play it. Like, <laughs> totally. It was just, you know, like, yeah. Okay. That's the major scale. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's the major scale. And at the time I probably didn't know what that In was. In one so. beat. Yeah. <laughs> it's the major scale yeah. over one beat. Yeah. <laughs> One done. Okay, that's the major scale. And here's a major. Here's a minor. Here's a- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is essentially what we just watched. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's that, a good that point. We might get pulled for that because of the. Uh, I don't yeah, we know, can't. I don't play know if that was much recording or anything. I know that's the problem. Music is the thing, and that's yeah, just won't. a YouTube thing, though. They will, Apple doesn't. They'll take they'll our do monetization, right? So if we get a million fucking views, they'll take all the money from it, right. essentially, for the advertising. Right. Or we can cut it out, which is easy to do. And yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but anyways. It gives you the option now, which is really nice. It'll say, hey, we found from this time code to this time code is, is yeah, flagged. Know, Do you want to cut it out? Right. And you can just click cut it out. Oh, that's cool. And you know that they, uh, like Joe Rogan, he like uh, puts a, um, like a transparent, uh, I guess it's Jamie doing it, but he puts a transparent screen off what we're watching on there. So I guess maybe that helps as far as what like do you not. Mean? Uh, so it's like. I don't think they flag the video. They flag the audio. Oh, you think it's that's more what the audio is the problem? Yeah. Mm. I mean, I guess well, they when could, they play, I guess they like the video like too. But popular videos, they, they every time they play videos, I always hear them say, well, "You know, you can't hear it," but it's always the audio that they're right, looking for. Right, hmm, that's a good point. I wonder when that's gonna change. It's like, oh, we're watching this funny video on, on your mom's house. They do it all the time. They're like, oh, we're watching this hilarious video, but it's got like you know Ariana Grande as the background, so we, right. we have to mute it. But so I guess we should leave this as check out Dave Martone. Uh, specifically, what we were watching was Dinky Pinky, just in case he gets pulled or something like that. You guys should add his music on uh, Apple Music and stuff. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, he's killer. He's got a wallet chain right there, by the way. He does he really? That you get one, and he's got one right. He there. Does that's so funny? Yeah, I think he <laughs> had one, and he pointed to it and was like, "Yeah, you need, you need one of these." And I. uh did not take him up on that. I wear one like on stage, but other than that, I do not. This is cool, man. I can't get over this video thing. Yeah, man. How's twenty twenty going? Do it so now, far. so that way, by the time the episode one hundred comes out, we don't. I don't look like a geek, just like yeah, geeking out about this video situation. Sure. We're getting used to it. How's uh twenty twenty going so far? Good, man. Like obviously that show was a big thing, and uh, releasing the album was huge. So it's awesome so far. I feel the momentum. Nice. We have um uh, our new. I hesitate to call him manager, but it's basically what he's quickly yeah, becoming. We talked a little bit about that in the last episode. He came out last of- night and um <laughs> this is so funny, dude. Okay. We played uh we played after we played one one set in the in the break. I do not know why I'm stammering so much, but we played one set and during the break these two guys came over and were like, Hey man, we really like you guys. We have a convention in Myrtle Beach uh in July. Uh can you guys do it? What would you charge? And we were like, Well, we need more details. Yeah. And um, you know, didn't really figure anything out there, but Chris comes in later that night and goes, and I told him about it. And he goes over there and talks to him and locks it in. <laughs> locked it in. I was like, geez, dude. And what did he lock like, this in? This guy's exactly. awesome. Uh, it's still like, you know, a couple of details being solidified, but we're, we're playing a, um, a coal. It's, it's like a conglomerate of coal companies. I don't know exactly. It's a corporate event. Okay. So it's a corporate event in uh, Myrtle Beach, Kingston Plantation. They're paying for our rooms. And giving us like you know a pretty oh, hefty one of those deals, nice. And um, they basically just want us to do what we do. They, I saw them jamming out to our original music too. Cool, cool. Oh, of course. I mean, if they, so, if anybody hears your original music, I don't think there's any other response than to jam out to. I mean, like, I hope it's so. very convincing. We need to do a much better job 
telling people this is an original song. Yes. Which falls to Goliath. And he struggles with that sometimes. Mm. He, I, he, I think he's coming from a mindset of like, well, duh. Right. Because it's he's, like, well, yeah, but you know it. Yeah. But you're in the band. Like nobody here knows remember, it. Right. <laughs> you have to remember. You have to I know Hope knows it because Hope's always here. You got to be you know? your own promoter. You have to tell yeah, people. You have to tell the people that are not, even if everyone in the room, but one guy knows it, it's your job to tell that one guy. Exactly. This is an original and, song. And telling him one time is not enough. You have to essentially yeah. reiterate, like, here's another original song. Yeah. Like, check this it's out. It's the reason you tweet, for example the same thing you know exactly. 10 times in a, in a month or whatever not everybody's gonna see it the first time but they'll, see it. See it yeah. they'll see it again and that's the, the reason time. we talk about patreon on this podcast so much exactly it's not just not because we love talking about it right <laughs> and, and, as much as we love and one that. of my favorite things to do is talk about how you guys can go to www.musicianstalkshow.com slash support the show we could talk hours about yeah. going to www. we could talk <laughs> hours about the dope <laughs> fucking rewards you're gonna get if you sign up for our patreon we're just page, being bro. ridiculous we're just being ridiculous but there we're, is we're not though you should you should do that there's gonna be some really cool things coming up that are going to make that even more exciting, obviously. Look at this hair. Uh, 2020 is bringing lots. Look at this guy. Yeah, I see it. What do you do with these? Get it out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> all right, if you, if you, I'm going to release the video now just so people know that was not in your face. It was all in my face. <laughs> yeah, so uh, excited about that. We might have locked in a gig there. It, it feels like it's like maybe 98%, which is pretty cool. And then Chris spilled degrees. a beer on the guy. So 98 degrees. <laughs> Best band of all time, dude. Yeah, that's what I thought. Best band of all time. That's why I was just checking to make sure your music palette was on. Yeah, you know what's funny? I had the uh, their first album on CD. They looked pretty good, man. You remember that? Those guys, they, Hold up here. they looked real good. I think that was their biggest attraction. I can find it for you right here, and we're going to show everyone that's not. Yeah, what song? Yeah, what song? This is the, the Christmas way. one. Give me one song that they fucking did that I can. Uh, this is the album right here. I had this album. This might not have been their first. And Rising, 98 Degrees and Rising. This was the album. So funny, dude. Leather Jackets. I remember I was probably seven. Me and my me and my neighbors would pick which one we were. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I was this one. I did that with the my Power friend was this one because he had a hat. <laughs> this guy clearly doesn't belong. Was he like the accountant? All right, let's take let's see the, the band little accountant. game. Who, yeah, who is what in this picture? <laughs> All right, this guy's the lead singer. No way. This guy's like the guy with the leather jacket standing in the middle. Is yeah, lead yeah, in front of everyone else. Yeah, exactly. All right, so. this guy's the. Uh, he looks like someone, and I've always thought he's that, a guitarist. I don't know who. I think well, the they're all—they're all singers. It's like they're like the Backstreet Boys. I didn't say singer. He's a guitarist, right? He plays. Uh, they all sing. That's it. It's like it's like the Backstreet oh, Boys. Oh no! Yeah. They, so they don't play. I think. Oh my god! What the, what the hell am I? And what are we even doing then? Like well, they, was, they all sing. I just want I just want it to be known that I was the lead guy. Well, I'm the lead guy too. <laughs> We're both the same guy. We're both the same. Guy. I am. Are you? Uh, this one. Guy? This is the one you know, and uh, we probably can't play a lot of this, but this is the one you Dude, know. It's 98 degrees. There's no. Amazing. It's terrible. <laughs> Sorry, I, I wish we didn't brought uh, it up. Girls, no, I, I mean these guys may not have been the best, but I, I don't, I don't hate that kind of music at all. I like the because it's guess nostalgic it's, for me, but yeah. I like the um, Backstreet Boys is my I favorite. But behind, insane, that kind I can't of stuff. get behind knowing that it's what kind of machine that is. It's a pretty boy uh, show off thing. It's like how pretty can you get and how how like nice can you sing and delicate. It's it I doesn't can't seem like I can't expression. speak for everyone after Backstreet Boys, but for Backstreet Boys, those dudes were fucking legit, dude. Mm -hmm. You need to watch Justin the documentary Timberlake on was him. Serious, he was in sure. sync. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was in sync. Yeah. Fuck, man. That's yeah. I don't. So here's so one dude got together these kids and was like, I'm gonna put together a, a boy band that's gonna take over the world. This guy yeah. created boy bands. He created Backstreet Boys. Yeah. After Backstreet Boys got super successful, he also created NSYNC. <laughs> so he created two bands. It'd be like if you started another band called, like, I don't know, Prep and Barium 2. And, like, right. you both, like, were and now it, competing against each other. <laughs> like, you started your own competition. And if they were, like, super, super popular, obviously. Oh, uh, they crushed it. He went to jail uh, at some point because he was in a Ponzi scheme. There so, you, you know, go. He was just, there like, you go. It's probably I kind cannot of mind remember he, that guy's name. The kind of mind he had was to capitalize on fucking I e also, e economics and I have to marketing. recommend the Backstreet Boys documentary that came out in 2015. It I'd like is to watch it. Phenomenal. Wasn't like everybody in that band's brother famous too? <laughs> mm, Do you know what I mean? Like, no. Not only were they famous, like Nick Carter, his well, brother, Lou was Perlman. Aaron Carter. Lou Perlman. Yeah, Aaron Carter's not as famous as Nick. And then Kevin and, famous uh, in my day. Kevin and Brian from uh, the Backstreet Boys are cousins. Right, but the, it's so weird how related. many connected. This guy, you could tell he fucking went to jail. Wow, Lou that was Perlman. the guy, Lou Perlman. Lou Perlman. Lou, Lou J. Perlman. Perlman. Dude, Lou J. I. Conspiracy I money laundering, it said right there. Yeah, but I mean, just look at this guy. There you go. Never He's the big creepy it. guy in the middle of the pretty boys. Yeah, never would have guessed it. He probably is a... Um, he basically created all these guys' careers. Yeah. But there's a, there's a clip in the Backstreet Boys documentary where they're talking about how, um, 
you know, they're they're basically saying not in a douche way, but they're saying like they're very good live. They, right. they can do all that. Right, stuff. right. And there's a clip of them when they're really young. What they did, one of the smartest things he did is they he had them tour high school like auditoriums. Mm-hmm. So they got young girls young, yeah. to fall in love with them immediately. Yeah. And there's a clip of them. Uh, walking somewhere and all these girls on a school bus that stopped lean out and say like sing something and they go all right and they start snapping their fingers and they sing acapella and it's fucking <laughs> flawless amazing it dude. is unbelievable That's it's like cool. it's like a camera in the 90s and like you're just sitting there like there's no way that was doctored and it was just <laughs> absolutely flawless and there's no microphones on them at all they just fucking Nothing, sang dude. right there. That's cool. It's just unbelievable how good that sounds too. That's cool. And they still do that stuff today. Like they're well, all, they're all extremely when you're good. A kid, when you're a kid and you and you have that kind of training that they, that they had, I think they were all like, uh, weren't they all like ridiculously well trained mm, singers? I don't know. I thought that's what it was. Something I don't like think weird. So. They were all like chorus singers or something like that. I forget. I don't know. How did he? How did he find them? You know, like they must have all been singers. They're, they're all Orlando, or yeah, they did, just look at headshots and goes, "These guys. We got one blonde head, one brunette. We yeah. got a guy with blue eyes." Dude, when blue. they started, Nick, I think he was. He was either, I think he was 12, Jesus. 13, 14, something like that. Like, and then the youngest one, or the oldest one was 19, I think, which is, would, would have been Kevin, this guy and here. How do you get So that? Kevin's the oldest, Nick's the youngest. How does like the parents, Ryan you know, and Kevin are cousins. This is a too. crazy thing. 12 years old. And he's going to be in this, uh, this boy band. It's like the South Park episode. Yeah. That's, uh, that's finger bang, dude. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that one. My I know God, the, um, I know the, uh. The Christian bo- band yeah, the one. Christian yeah. band one's great too. But the finger bang was specifically a boy band where they all sang and they dressed up and and they in their fantasy these were they're amazing music videos and they're playing in the mall and, and mm-hmm. it just looks really yeah. dumb actually. But in their fantasy, they're they're Backstreet Boys essentially. Are okay, well Backstreet Boys and shit started playing in malls. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there like, you go. So that must be even more of the joke that yeah. I didn't even understand. Yeah. But that South Park episode is great. Finger bang. I can't recommend that documentary enough. You guys, I don't know where I'll it is. I'll check that out. I'll track I it love down. Stuff like that. It's um. Brian talks about he tells this story about how he was in you know choir as a kid or whatever church or school or whatever and the something like this the teacher was having everybody go around and take a solo just kind of see where they were and he said he said he took his solo and the room went quiet and the teacher said he pointed at him and said you are going to make a lot of money with that gift jeez <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> that is that is an insane story yeah like, could you imagine just like you're a kid you're like i what i don't know like what did i, I just wonder, do like i'm just doing you know what yeah. i do yeah I wonder which if is which training. further confirms my uh theory that there is the only place that I think actual true raw talent exists is in is in vocals and voice. Maybe, maybe because it's just there's plenty of biology. people that can sing really well and have no idea what they're doing. Right, and uh, it's not so with guitar players. You, yeah, but when you think that that guitar players are more, uh, um, they have first of all, there's a wider range. I think of what you can do on a guitar. There's like so many different styles of playing guitar. I've there's heard a lot of different styles of singing yeah. too. I guess reggae, metal, singing, Whatever. crooning. Just, you know. <laughs> so I guess like though the the singing and you could choose whatever your style is, right? Like it's going to call to you. Like that style is going to present itself to you. I don't know what I'm trying to get at here, but it just doesn't seem like it's just necessarily. I've never talent. met. You're gonna be I've that. never met a five year old kid that can pick up a guitar and play something dope. I've never, right. I've never encountered that in, in the real world, and I've never seen videos. Of that. I mean, I've seen kids, you know, little there kids are. playing stuff. Right. But how long have they been playing? Right. They don't just pick up a guitar for the first time and go, nice. Like, there's a lot of time. But there's there. little kids that can go like, whoa, whoa. It's right. Like, Holy shit, that was on pitch, dude. What? Because like, they listen to know? music and they just, uh, they, they can grab it quickly and really yeah, which quickly. is a natural thing, which mm-hmm. means no training, no that's training, and you already are ahead of someone else. That's interesting. And I don't think it's really like that with any other instrument. You know, you need some training to figure out, and then maybe you progress faster once you start training. Yeah. But singing, it's like some people just have something that others Ability, don't. Yeah. And I've met a lot of those people that have something that I know that I just do not. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard people say that's in the ears. Like a big part of it is being able to hear yourself and being able to hear like yeah. what good, good singing sounds like. Mm-hmm. And when you recognize that and you can replicate it, I mean, you're just automatically a good singer. So just being able to hear it and understanding like what, you know, yeah, what it is. That's interesting. Because I definitely... Like I sang a lot as a kid. I was more interested in learning the words to songs I remember than actually hitting pitches and stuff hmm. like that, which is in, like just as far as like what my interests were. Um, so I think that's what drew me to songwriting more than I am. I think a, a, some crazy good singer, I, you know, I don't think at all, but I think that uh, I do like powerful songs, you know, powerful songwriting. Yeah, I guess, you know, in my singing realm, I guess. 
Again, I recommend this Backstreet Boys documentary. <laughs> uh, Are you making money from this? <laughs> if you go to the I'm link check in, it out. If I you really go to the am. link in my bio, they're going to send me. No. I just recently saw an um, Eminem documentary that was good. It was uh, different. It was behind the lyrics is what it was called. And oh, okay. It was on YouTube. Um, some of the information was just wrong, I think. Like, some of them, like, that's, that can't be true. Isn't like that stupid? It's, yeah, it just sounds like, like he doesn't know what he's talking about in certain parts. So it makes me question the whole thing. But I did find it entertaining. And some of the stuff is probably just fact that you can't deny. Like, there's not going to be, you know. But some of the stuff, I'm just like, he said, he just infers things about what happened. About, and I'm like, that's probably not the way it happened. Like, yeah, it doesn't that's sound not, that's, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? That's not a documentary, dude. Come on. It's kind of a document. It's his, like, his own idea and own, uh, and own, um, it's a documentary of what could have happened. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> I think this would be interesting if this happened. Okay, so that's a fictional film. It's just a film. <laughs> yeah, it's called Behind the Lyrics, so I guess a lot of it... I watched it, this documentary. Um, I actually saw this recent documentary three times. It was called uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Oh. Yeah, is it's it on pretty YouTube? dope. It's like what could have happened. On Netflix? What is like, it on? Um, <laughs> what is it on? I, dude, though, for real, though, I went New Year's Day, New Year's <laughs> Eve. I went and saw it in 4DX. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a movie in 4DX? No, Do you know what that, that is? I don't, no. All right, so 3D, obviously, we all know what that is. Yes. 4D, the movie's in 3D, and now the theater interacts with you. So, oh. like, when they're standing on, like, the gusty cliffs, wind blows over you. What? When, they, when she's sailing in the water, water splashing on you and all what? sorts of crazy you stuff. You have to wear a raincoat? No. The seats move. You're, it's literally like a Disney ride for two and a half hours. Holy shit. Dude, the seats move like... <laughs> like our... Uh, uh, Logan's drink. He got brought a monster, and it all it will, like straight up just spilled. Like oh, so this so this is a, I get the idea here. This is a way to, for them to make more money at the concessions. No, they're gonna make more money at the concessions. We'll spill everybody's drinks, <laughs> popcorn. They won't be able to keep their popcorn in their fucking seats. It's gonna be fo- all over the place. I think you're focusing on the wrong part of this. <laughs> yeah, five D popcorn splashing all over you. Five D. We just show up, shoot you in the face. <laughs> 6D Skittles are all fucking raining down yeah. on you because yeah. the guy behind you Dude, it didn't was expect awesome. the ride they, to uh, they inject smells into it as I well. I knew that was going to be smell vision That was a thing back in the fucking 70s or some shit. Well, that sounds stupid, but this was awesome. smell like, vision Logan, Logan not me. We could not... <laughs> We could not stop laughing. For 20 minutes, we were just giggling like girls. Cause we I, were, bet. For, I bet. For one, we were just so excited of how awesome it was. And for two, I brought up the point of how stupid we look if someone was just like watching it. Like, uh, yeah, oh, here's if a, someone was just standing where the screen was, watching all the people just... At, the end, of the movie, <laughs> at the end of the movie, you get a text that says, if you want any, if you, yeah, if you if don't you want, want everybody to see this video that we just took of you at this theater... <laughs> or or it's, like, it's like a Disney ride. You walk out, it's like, would you like to purchase the picture of like... <laughs> yeah, and if you don't, we're going to send it to all your friends. Yeah, <laughs> I'll buy it. How much is it? Eighty dollars. Right, Take my money. It, yeah, the tickets are like twenty five bucks. But uh, okay, that's not bad though. Highly recommended, dude. And so you've seen the movie in in three D and four D X now. I didn't see it in three D. Okay, you didn't see it. You just saw it in when when you movie. go to four D X, it's in three D. So I have right, seen it. So, but right. I, so I saw it twice normally, and then once in four D X. That's cool. Cool. Awesome. So I assume it's a great movie. I still have not seen it's it. It's good. Yeah, I need to go again. I need to go again. Yeah, <laughs> this is why I got the. I don't uh, even know if I want to go with you. This is why. <laughs> I was gonna say I'll go with you, but I'll just keep nudging. Like, be like, wait, yeah, wait check yeah, this out. This is cool. Comes, wait, wait, he's about, comes, to, he's about Matt, to kill ready, it right here. Like, no. I don't think you would do that, but that's funny. All right, just be that guy that always nudges his guy. This, this next part's cool. It's like, oh dude, just my let me god, watch wait, it. you see this, dude? <laughs> Disney pulled out all the stops. I've probably told this story on the podcast before. It's not even really a story. It's maybe a little anecdote. But uh, Daniel Kyra and I went to the premiere of Harry Potter six. Um, okay. Why am I Is that the last the one? No, there's seven, and they split into two parts. So oh. there's eight movies, six uh, Half Blood Prince. We okay, went to see. We went to the movie premiere of that. And uh, first of all, we went dressed as Sith Lords. We had lightsabers and we're wearing like how clothes. appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, the whole joke was we were going to walk up and be like, oh, I thought that this, so is this is Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what we, it, it kind of we kind of half bailed. So we didn't do the like punchline, but we yeah. still showed up with a lightsaber and <laughs> like we painted our faces. It's like funny Darth enough, Maul. I think people like, we were just standing guys there. Everyone's, everyone's, everyone's like looking movie. around like, what the hell are these guys doing? This was back when you could like yeah, this was back when you could like paint your face and not like go to jail for for being in the movie theater or whatever jail for being in the movie theater they don't like masks for sure oh right because of the whole potential terrorism Um, thing anyway we get in there we're sitting in like the third row because we got in there kind of late in cloaks (laughs) cloaks we're sitting down and you were warm we get through all the previews and the lights go down and somebody in the back just yells at the top of his lung snape kills dumbledore oh no spoiler (laughs) alert (laughs) the whole theater just died laughing was this like the first day or this is the opening night oh my god but if you're if you're there opening night you uh you know what's up you've read the books yeah (laughs) That's funny. So it was. Really you know funny. what? I I enjoy even just the simple things in movie theaters: reclining chairs, 
problem is, yeah. I almost a lot always of them fall don't. Asleep. A lot of them don't do that now, though. I know, but they'll they, lean back like a very little bit. No, man. There's this one that actually like reclines all the way back. I'm trying to think of where it yeah, was. Yeah, well, they have theaters over there. The one we went to, um, the and 4DX games, one I doesn't. Think. That has like a specific chair, obviously, but. The other theaters are just like straight up lazy boys. I love that. I love being able to just recline a yeah. little bit. And you have a lot of space between you and the next Tons person. of space. Like a, too much space. You don't even need that much. But they yeah. just, they sell the tickets for more money and it's worth it. I never fall asleep in the movie theater. I, I couldn't understand. I would like go to the movies with Ashton and look over halfway through and he's just out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> something about if I, if I even sit down, man, I get tired. It's like really? something about it. I got to keep moving. Maybe you should, uh. Go to the doctor or something. I don't yeah, know. it's like narcoleptic. <laughs> no, I'm narcoleptic. Dude, I don't even know what it is. Sometimes I'll be walking and I'll fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was at the bank. I was right in the middle of getting my fucking yeah, deposit. Just or, fell asleep. Woke well, up right. 10 minutes later. They had to wake me up and said, sir, we're closed. On top of a car. I don't know what happened. It was very weird. They threw me out. Apparently they closed. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's normal to fall asleep like when you drive every time, right? Totally. Yeah. The seats are too comfortable. That's why yeah. I've been saying that for years. I sit down. I go sleep. Like, what do you want? I guess <laughs> I have to Uber everywhere. Com- Can I get a rock seat, please? I always miss my stops at the on the bus. <laughs> way too, I'm just sleeping right through. Wake up in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I think they go in circles, Dallas. They don't go to Pen- They don't just go one way. Greyhound bus. Pen- <laughs> this is a Greyhound bus. Okay. If you get on the wrong bus. And- <laughs> you get on the wrong bus, you fall asleep, you end up in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Sounds like a Dumb and Dumber movie. That kind of does. All right. Well, uh, any final thoughts as we wrap up an hour here? No, I'm excited. Uh, if Even though this this episode is probably not the best because maybe they can't see what we're going to have or maybe we will show it. I don't know. But next time when we come back and do this, it's going to be much better. Audio only. We have a couple more weeks of audio only and then we're going to video. And again, if you want to see the video, obviously you won't be able to see that on Apple Podcasts and stuff. That will all still be available like normal. What if we release Nothing changes this for, for Patreons you. only, this as a video, they can actually watch it on Patreon. Is there a way to make it private like that? Where we yeah, can, oh, for sure. Very so easy. That, and everybody else just gets the audio. Let's do now. that. Okay, so for the next couple of weeks, Matt has decreed we will uh, release the videos that are basically tests. We'll yeah. release them to our Patreon. So uh, you can get a look at what we've been working on. Yep, and you'll see the nasty not clean background and everything yeah and it's our not patreon, nasty, and just, our patreons are the reason we are able to do this fortunately yeah, so. so they get to enjoy it first so exactly if you want to get in early if you want to enjoy all the all the fun stuff check out our patreon page you can go there uh, musicians talk show.com slash support the show or slash patreon or you can just go to patreon.com slash musicians talk show any of those words it's out there it's out there yeah and uh join a tier that you like we are going to be revamping the awards rewards soon and coming up with cool stuff one of those rewards is going to be uh, access to all the interviews we do going forward. So right. you'll have access to all the ones we've done so far, but any other one, any other interviews we schedule and release in the future are only going to our patrons. Correct. Our patrons. I can't say that word. Correct. It, it is a, it is a little bit of work to actually get these guests to secure them and, and schedule it and all that. And sometimes, you know, there are times when we have to like leave work or right. the only often, time we can do yeah. it. So oftentimes it's, it's, we have it's to more do it work. And I feel times. like, I think it's worth the, the money for the patrons to pay. If they're going to, if they want to enjoy that kind of content, then they can just pay a little bit more. And it's, yeah, it won't sure. cost much. It won't be the most expensive. No, we're I'm thinking of starting that at the five dollar tier, which is very affordable. Obviously, yeah, five dollars a month you're going to get access to. Uh, we are going to try to do at least one interview a month in 2020. And yeah. as I say that, it's January 5th, and we don't have a guest for January yet. So we'll get <laughs> I've got an idea. Okay, cool. We'll get one. All right. Well, somebody good. That'll do it for us, my friends. Um, until next time. Peace. Stay sexy.